I'm not entirely sure that I'm doing this correctly. I'm currently sanitizing a bag of rocks. How's your week going? Feel free to subscribe for more thrilling content. Hello there, how are you all doing? I hope you are all doing well. So it is once again the time of year where I go to the internet and find the most random art hacks that I can find and test them out to see if they actually work or not. Now I've actually been doing this series now for nearly four years. I started off with Pinterest art hacks. I went to Instagram art hacks. I think I've done a TikTok art hack video before. But basically today I'm going to be going to TikTok, the place that I initially thought was for kids who danced and lip synced um, and also kind of peanut butter banana rhyme, peanut butter banana rhyme, are you vegan yet? It's time, go vegan. This lady has literally been removed from the platform countless times yet she still somehow manages to find her way back again. Doctors use TikTok to give you short snippets of information, artists use TikTok to show you quick little hacks, small businesses show their processes. It's just a place that is not just for young people anymore, it's a place for people of all ages. Now I have found on TikTok five incredibly cool art hacks that I've never seen before that I think are absolutely genius and I personally just want to test them out to see if they actually work and a lot of you hopefully will know me by now that I'm very honest about things if I think something's stupid I'm gonna say it's stupid and I know a lot of you have subscribed to me in the past through my art hack videos before so if you do enjoy them and you want me to continue up with this series feel free to give this video a thumbs up because it really really does help me out a lot but I think it's about time we get started on our first art hack so let's go so for this hack I thought it was pretty genius this woman here uses spackle to fill in the cracks and holes on rocks the reason she does this is because it makes a really nice smooth surface to paint on the rocks. And I just think that's such a clever idea. I've never even thought about doing something like that before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint two rocks, one with spackle, one without, and see if there is actually a difference. And yes, I did actually spend $15 on a bag of rocks. I actually don't live anywhere that I would have these kind of rocks. Otherwise, I gladly would have chosen to not purchase a $15 bag of rocks. Oh, look at the look at the rocks. Brown ones and some grey ones and some other funny looking ones. Oh, they actually feel very polished and smooth already. They're literally, they're already smooth. Why did they smooth them for me? I wanted to smooth them myself. What we could do is take one that's very cracked. So this one right here has actually, it's smooth, but there's a lot of different cracks and ridges in there that would really, really show through. Um, any form of painting on there. It'd be very, very lumpy and kind of just cracked looking. So this is what I'm using. It's this just regular wool spackling that you use to fill in holes and things like that. Goes on pink, dries white. Don't, <laughs> don't smell it. And you basically just like take some and then you just sort of smooth it on stuff. What I'm gonna do is really apply a very thick coat of this. What's your job, Chloe? Oh, I just stick wall spackling onto a rock that I purchased on Amazon. How about you? I don't want to make this too thick, but at the same time, we want to make sure that it gets in all the little crevices. Because this is probably not the best example because it's only got a few cracks in it, I'm going to go outside, grab a couple of stones that I find that have like a lot of like pits in them, spackle one of them and not the other, and then we compare the two to see how this actually is beneficial. So I've just found these rocks outside. Um, they're decorative rocks, and I feel like I've just spent $15 on a bag of rocks for nothing. So what I thought I would do is I would spackle this rock but not this rock. And then we'll paint both of them the same color and then you can kind of see the difference whether it's actually beneficial to do this or not. So I'm gonna set these to one side now and let them dry. Okay, our rocks are dry, so I'm gonna go grab some sandpaper now and see how they look. So this is my going to Target outfit. What do you think? Don't worry, I'm joking. I don't wear this to Target. Because I don't go to Target, because danger. I just figured since I'm, I'm gonna be rubbing this down, I might as well wear a decent mask so I don't breathe in the crack of the rock. You can really see how it's filled in those gaps there. So while I sand down a rock, even though I'm sure it's very fascinating 
to watch, almost like watching paint dry. I thought I'd let you know that today's video is kindly sponsored by Stereo, which is this amazingly fun new broadcast social platform where I've basically been having all of these fun live shows with friends this past week. And essentially, Stereo, if you haven't heard of it yet, it's all over social media at the moment. It basically has a bunch of content creators, people like Dan and Phil on there at the moment, celebrities, musicians, and so much more. It's just incredibly fun to listen to live conversations between two people while you go about your daily business. You can find topics and shows on pretty much anything you can think of. Like, for example, on my recent show, I talked a lot about art. I talked about social media, growing a following, Disney, and tons of other stuff. Absolutely, because you're, I mean, you're so, you're like already on the track. You make a lot of Disney art as it is, and you know, you're, you're going to be there soon. But I'm going to be so smug. Sure. I'm going to be like picking up your paintings and like shoving them in people's faces. Like, look at this. <laughs> it's the best one here. You need to, you look at it, appreciate it. It's beautiful. Buy it. Buy it. You could be like one Buy of those people that, you know, wait on the, the corners of like the, the traffic yeah, lights. Yeah, like, like the spinning your arm around instead yeah. of a sign. <laughs> best part is it's very interactive between you and the audience so you can actually send in audio messages during the live shows and I can play them listen to them answer them or respond just curious in relation to the art have you heard of obviously you've heard of crypto art nfts do you have any thoughts on it if you want to check out my next live show it will be on Sunday March 14th at 12 p.m EST on the stereo app so check it out link in the description or it's free to download in your app store free to make an account and you can follow me at Art of Chloe Rose and you can listen to my previous shows as well. I really hope to see you there and thank you so much to Stereo for sponsoring today's video. So there's our first rock and then this is our outside rock. Okay so these are our rocks. As you can see they are very very nicely filled so there were more cracks and dips in these rocks than I actually realized. This one in particular was the one from outside. Um, this one clearly had a lot of deep very very deep crevices that we no longer have to worry about there's obviously a lot of little little pits in there as well that were smoothed out okay so we have our two rocks here this is the outside rock this is the one that came in the amazon package and this is the outside rock that i didn't feel whatsoever so we're going to use the same paint we're going to use this lovely folk art chalk paint just to cover up all of the cracks and all of the rock and see how it looks And I'm deliberately using this particular paint because it is matte and I feel like matte paint works best on these kinds of projects. Wow, okay, you can clearly see that it's pretty smooth for a rock. It honestly looks pretty perfect. Like it's such a smooth, there's a bit of a dip there, but I'm not sure how that would have gotten filled. But other than that, it's incredibly smooth. Next up, we'll try the Amazon rock, which is already pretty smooth on its own because they've buffed them or something. Okay, once again, it's very smooth. It looks pretty good. So now, out of curiosity, I am just gonna paint the surface of this rock just to see if it looks that bad without being filled. In which case, is there any point in bothering doing this? I don't know. You definitely notice you have to fill in a lot of these grooves that would otherwise have been filled. Overall, not too bad. Fairly smooth on its own. You can tell it has a lot of ridges and stuff, but you can clearly see how much smoother this one is compared to this one. And obviously all rocks and stones are different. So this next TikTok I thought was actually genius. I've never thought of it before. But basically, when you're trying to clean your brushes between colours, don't just swell them in water. Add a tissue to your water cup. Tap and swell your brushes to clean it way faster and better. I've never tried this before. I feel like this is actually a really genius and clever idea, but we're gonna see if it's actually worthwhile doing. To make it fair, I have two glasses of water. Both are, I've got the hiccups. I have two paintbrushes. These are also exactly the same. I have some tissue that I'm gonna just stick into one of these glasses. Then we're gonna put the same amount of paint on both paintbrushes, swirl them about exactly the same. I'm gonna put the exact same amount of paint on both of these brushes, swirl them around the exact same time in the same way, except one is gonna have one is going to have the tissue and one isn't. Okay, let's just like shove that. That should be fine. So we have this one with the tissue, this one without. We're going to grab some paint on this brush and then some paint about the same, right? About the same. So what we're going to do now, wipe, wipe it. This is how I normally swirl my brushes, just round and round like that. And then at the same time, Oh no, the paper's moving. <laughs> Honestly, there's not really any difference. And there's actually, uh, to be fair, oh no, there's actually more on this paintbrush. Let's try again. I'm gonna try doing this a couple of times. And now you can really see the difference. When you only use it a couple of times, this one cleaned it much quicker. 
than this one did. So obviously you've got this one, which isn't fully clean, which is fine. We only swelled it a couple of times versus this one, which clearly has more paint on it. The only thing with this is the tissue paper does go into little shreds like this, which is kind of nasty. That being said, because a lot of the pigment is taken off and put straight onto the tissue instead of into the water itself, you may actually find that the water has actually helped to be preserved longer because of the tissue in there. I'm not sure. I, this is just a theory of mine. In conclusion, where's, where's my glasses so I look smarter? In conclusion, I would say that this hack does indeed work. It seems a little bit wasteful at first, but it may actually help to preserve more water, in which case maybe it's actually not that wasteful after all. Now this video was actually very good because you had two... Now this art hack was actually very good because you had two art hacks in one. Essentially she said that if you have a paintbrush that looks a bit frayed or is a bit cheap, you can make it a more expensive brush with a pair of like small tweezer scissors. And I thought I could try and mold this into being a more expensive type of brush, like maybe this one. This one is obviously a little bit more graduated in the way that it's like, it's cut, but this one is obviously, it's like a cheap paintbrush. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do, first of all, is just cut. As if I know what I'm actually doing and I don't. I'm probably gonna cut off more than I want to purely because this paintbrush is old and it is bent. So I wanna try and make something out of this nasty old paintbrush to see if we can save resources. I mean, he's kind of looking better already. This one is like gradually cut upwards. I think I really buggered this one up. Okay, I do not have much hope for this round brush. I don't think I have given it a very good haircut. I'm not entirely sure that I'm doing this correctly. Okay, so it's still a little bit wonky, but there's not much I can do to control that. I mean, hey, you're not gonna get any solid smooth lines with this purely because there's a lot of shorter hairs and it's also not applying that great. I'm gonna give this particular brush a two out of five. So what I'm gonna try and do now is turn this squared out brush into something more like a filbert. And a filbert looks like this. It's more rounded at the edges versus squared out like that. Dampen the bristles. Are you ready for your haircut? I do apologize in advance if I mess up. Um, I also apologize if I mess up bad enough that you have to go into the bin. It's also be beneficial because the very tips of this paintbrush are actually dried up. <laughs> I wonder if I'm allergic to art hacks. It looks like if you go downwards, it's oh dear, oh, oh dear, okay. I also feel like you need to have a lot of patience. I really like hate your paintbrushes to do this. Oh no, I've re okay. You know what, we're gonna make it an angle brush instead because I don't have a small angle brush. And that's also just an excuse because I completely buggered it up. Look at that. We've got a nice fancy angle brush. I mean, it's a little bit more angled than your atypical angle brush like that. But I mean, hey, I though clearly don't have much of a talent for cutting my paint brushes up. Um, other than that though, I personally would just go and buy some cheap paint brushes shaped like the paint brushes you want. So I have seen in my time some very questionable art hacks. And I say questionable purely because they almost show ways to cheat at art, if that makes sense. Like not cheat, but almost it could be used as a method of cheating at art. For example, this particular art hack that I will try out, I would love to hear your opinion on it and whether you think that this is actually something that people should be doing. How to pretend like you're good at drawing. So you take a new layer and you basically completely texturize over a photo of yourself. You go over the details with the pencil, put them together, group the layers together, put it underneath the original layer and then you change it to a clipping mask. And basically, if you don't know what a clipping mask is, essentially it makes the layer above the object you're drawing on only go into the layer below, if that makes sense. So say you have, you've drawn a circle, you make a new layer, and then you fill the whole page with yellow. If you make a clipping mask of that yellow layer, it's gonna just make the layer below it yellow. So it's just gonna make the circle itself yellow. And I saw this and it made me a little bit angry, but also at the same time, it's clever. It's very apparent that it isn't a drawing. I think that it's completely harmless if you're doing it just for fun, but if you are kind of doing it with the intent to pretend 
that you did draw it, I think that's a big difference. I think it's totally harmless, don't get me wrong. I think it's something that's fun for a lot of people, but I would say that if you are someone that wants to do this and make commissions with something like this, you really need to disclose that this is not a physically hand-drawn picture. This, you have to kind of disclose with things like that. But I'm gonna try it out for the sake of the video today, but let me know in the comments down below what you think of things like this, and maybe in the future if you'd like to see me react to these kinds of TikToks where it kind of gives you a way to cheat in art. I'd love to know if you if you would like to see that. Now this one's a little bit scary because it shows in Procreate how you can insert a private photo that's not gonna show on the progress video that's filmed in Procreate. And it's showing how some artists could easily trace over an image and pretend they haven't because in the replay, it looks like the original photo isn't there. But basically what you can do in Procreate is you can go to the settings and go to the time-lapse replay and you can see like right from the start. For me for example I had all of these different references in my picture that I was using to look at different mountain shapes, different colours um, and you can see where I just kind of every now and again brought a reference into the painting until I made it all you know exactly how I wanted it to look. Okay so we have an image here of my dog and it's it's shiny, so it's going to be hard to see. <laughs> My little pup, he has an Instagram account. It's Merlin the Ginger Golden Doodle. So if you want to follow that, feel free to, to go ahead and follow it. So what they do is they make a new layer. Then they go to making a, we'll do like a soft pastel. And they did it in like a bright color. It doesn't really matter though. We'll do it in purple. And then we'll just kind of cover it like that. Okay, done. And then they make a second layer. And this is where, let's make this invisible. This is where they're gonna start going over all of the features of the face, 6B pencil. And they literally just go over all of the features. I'm not really sure if there's a method to this other than <laughs> just like scribbling over things. That's not creepy at all. That's not, definitely not, definitely not. And we're just gonna follow the outline of his fur. Battery exhausted. I'm also exhausted. But you don't see me shutting off. It's surely if we merge it and stick it underneath. Surely it's gonna, oh. Oh, okay. I see. Right. Okay. It does kind of look a bit sketchy, but you can still tell that it's a photo. What I do want to try though is maybe making this layer a little bit smaller. Because I feel like that's kind of hampering the details a little bit. Clipping mask. Oh. Ooh. Okay. That looks a bit weird. I'm curious to know what you think of this. Do you think that it's something that is fun to do just for just for fun or do you think that some people actually do stuff like this it looks pretty cool i won't lie it does look pretty cool i do like that a lot um but i don't know what do you think i'd love to hear your opinions so this particular art hack i found the other day was probably my favorite one that i've ever seen in my entire life basically it says if you're out of blue paint all you need to do is mix up some green paint and you just keep mixing you keep mixing you keep mixing until you're left with blue and yellow, you take the yellow out and boom, you're left with, you're left with blue. Like, mind blowing, never thought of that before. If you've got a rip drawer in, all you need to do is take a small piece of tape and then throw that away and use a big piece of tape. Re reinforce it with more tape, glue stick, just to add a bit more there. Um, genius. Genius idea, that one. Okay, so there is a TikTok account that basically just makes videos based on using this hack to make paint out of old eyeshadow colors. It's so satisfying to watch, really, really fun. And it's something that I thought would be really fun to try because she actually showed you a specific mixture that she uses mixed up with the pigments of the eyeshadow paints. She breaks up a bunch of the pigment from the eyeshadow with a little, little knife, really finely crushes it. And then she adds her own specific mixture into it until it makes a paint. 
Um, initially I thought, oh, maybe this is just water, but I realized quite quickly based on the consistency of it, this definitely was not paint. So I watched more of her TikToks and she actually showed one where she makes her special mixture. Basically, it's just a simple mixture of vegetable glycerin like this, mixed up with some gum arabic. This basically forms a type of binder. She does use clover oil as well, um, but I didn't have this. I didn't want to buy it either because it just seemed quite wasteful to me. That's how you do it. We're going to mix up our mixture and test out how these paints actually look and see if I can make new paints based on some old eyeshadow palettes I no longer use. Right, gum arabic. Okay, and I add approximately double in hot water. And then we add a touch of the vegetable glycerin. Glycerin, is it glycerin? Am I saying that wrong too? And leave it to cool for about 30 minutes. Okay, we have our mixture now. Mine is not super, super hot, obviously, because the, the this would warp. It's not plastic, by the way. This is biodegradable compostable plastic so basically now this needs to cool down before i can actually use it so what we're going to do is i'm going to put it in the fridge come back a little bit later on and then i'm going to try mixing it with the eyeshadow pigment okay so i have this old palette that i never use anymore it's covered in makeup and powder and stuff and it's just i never use these colors they're very very vibrant and i just i never wear them so i figured that i might as well try and turn at least some of them or at least one of them for today into a form of paint so i most likely i'm going to try using the pink here purely because i know for a fact i'm never going to use this one and i think it might make a really pretty paint color i have this piece of plastic from an old like wall frame um, that i'm going to use because she uses glass or some sort of plastic to mix it on and break it up so we're going to do that I know this is going to pain a lot of people and I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> but this is basically just pressed pigment. So with the correct binder, technically, this should make a really pretty paint. Scrape it up and then tip it out. Okay, we have our pigment here now. I have my binder, which I'm just mixing up. There's a bit in it. Ew, what is that? I'm going to pour a little bit of the binder. Okay, it's really starting to come into a nice consistency now. Wow, that's actually a really beautiful colour. It's just like a watercolour. I know she said that if you want to make a more acrylic paint, you would use an acrylic gesso mixed in with this pigment. I know she said that using clove oil makes it more like fast or archival quality. Um, so if you do want to make your own paint out of eyeshadows for some reason, Definitely use the clove oil because that's what she said you should do for archival purposes. But look at that, that's beautiful. Break that up. I might actually make a video on this where I make paint out of eyeshadow palettes. That might be a really fun video to make. Not the most pigmented, but very pretty. That was fun. Awesome, I give this a five out of five because it really worked well, looks fun. It just, it's really, really beautiful and it's a nice way to reuse eyeshadow palettes that I otherwise would have thrown away. I think this one's probably expired by this point. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so incredibly much for watching. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. I really, really did have a lot of fun with these particular hacks and there's something new that I've never seen before. Functionality wise, I would say that the stones were probably, these were probably my most functional favorite art hack that I've ever done. I just think it's a really clever idea if you're someone that does a lot of rock painting and you want to fill in those holes Holes. that works really well but yeah let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see me try this again or with pinterest instagram or tiktok again again let me know in the comments down below thank you once again to stereo for sponsoring today's video and feel free to check out my next live show link in the description down below it's on sunday so don't miss it and yes once again thank you for watching take care of yourselves and i will see you in the next video